This tutorial is sponsored by PhotoFire, the easiest and most user-friendly way to perfect your photos with just a few clicks. In just seconds, you can remove unwanted objects, clone, easily crop and blur, remove and replace backgrounds, color correct, and so much more. PhotoFire has a massive library of over 200 effects that you can use to instantly make your photos look awesome and professional looking. Until the middle of this month, PhotoFire is giving everyone a $50 discount off its price. Click the link in my video's description. Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Politics aside, I'm going to show you how to recreate the iconic Hope poster of Barack Obama's 2008 presidential campaign designed by Shepard Ferry using a different headshot. This is an update of a tutorial I did many years ago on an earlier version of Photoshop. Before we begin, I want to mention that I'll be moving a bit faster for more advanced users. I provided a Photoshop template that you can download so you can follow along. Its link is located in my video's description or project files. It includes the original Hope poster design and a separate layer of the framed border, including the bottom shape that your text will be placed onto. In addition, I included the link to the font Nevis Bold, which is relatively close to the original font Gotham used in the poster. Gotham isn't free, but Nevis Bold is. Open a photo of someone that you'd like to use for this project. It can be color or black and white. The first step is to make a selection around your subject. Since I want the selection to be as sharp as possible, I drew paths with the pen tool and then converted them into a selection. I did an in-depth tutorial on the pen tool, so if you'd like to watch it, I provided that link as well. Once you made a selection around your subject, Click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection next to your subject. We'll convert the entire layer into a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively. To do this, click the icon at the upper right and click Convert to Smart Object. With your Move tool active, drag the subject onto the tab of the poster template. Without releasing your mouse or pen, drag it down and release. Drag the subject below the frame. We'll make a new layer below the subject by control clicking or command clicking the new layer icon. In this empty layer, we'll create a two-tone gray background behind the subject. But first, go to View. If rulers and snap aren't checked, just click on them to make them active. Go to the ruler on the left and drag out a guideline to the middle until it snaps in place. If you don't see the guideline, press Ctrl or Command H. If your foreground and background colors aren't black and white respectively, press D on your keyboard. Click the foreground color to open the color picker. In the Brightness field, type in 50%. Then click OK or press Enter or Return. Open your rectangular marquee tool and drag a rectangular selection over the left side of the poster, making sure it snaps to the middle guideline. Fill it with the foreground color by pressing Alt or Option plus Delete. Deselect it by pressing Ctrl or Command D. Click the foreground color again and type in 25% for the brightness. This time, drag your tool over the right side of the poster, making sure it snaps to the guideline. Fill it with the foreground color and deselect it. Make the frame visible. Hide the guideline by pressing Ctrl or Command H. Go to View and click Snap to deactivate it. Make your subject active. We want the top of our subject's head to go beyond the frame. If it's not, just drag it up. If you want to enlarge your subject instead, open your Transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T. Go to a corner, and when you see a diagonal double arrow, press and hold Alt or Option plus Shift as you drag it out. Go to Filter, Blur, and surface blur. 
Type in 10 for the radius and the threshold. Surface Blur essentially blurs an image while preserving the edges. Go back to Filter and click Filter Gallery. Open the Artistic Folder and click Cutout. Make the number of levels 5 because the poster has 5 colors. Make the Edge Simplicity 5 and the Edge Fidelity 1. To save some space in the Layers panel, click the small arrow icon on the right of the layer which collapses the effects. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Channel Mixer. Check Monochrome, which makes all the colors neutral gray. If your photo is already black and white, it's still a good step to use since there may be a subtle color cast to it. Click the Adjustment Layer icon again and click Posterize. Make the levels 5. This sets the number of tonal levels or brightness values for each channel in an image. Open your Magic Wand tool. Make the Tolerance 10, check Anti-Alias, and make sure Contiguous is not checked. Click on the second lightest tone of your subject to make a selection of it. Go to Select and Save Selection. Click OK and deselect it. Click the Adjustment Layer icon one more time and click Gradient Map. Click the Gradient Bar to open the Gradient Editor. Click the lower left stop. This will be our darkest color. Click the color box and in the hexadecimal field type in 0, 0, 3, 2, 4, D. Then click OK or press Enter or Return. Click below the gradient bar to create a new stop. For its location, type in 25%. Click the color box and type in E01825. Make another stop and for its location, type in 50%. For its color, type in 7498A4. Click the lower right stop and for its location, type in 75%. For its color, type in FDE5A9. Click the right corner under the bar to add another stop. Notice this stop's location is 100% and its color is the same as the one to its left. To save more space in the Layers panel, we'll place all of the adjustment layers into a folder. To do this, shift-click the bottom adjustment layer to make all of them active and press Ctrl or Command G. Name it Adjustment Layers. We'll make a new layer below the folder by control clicking or command clicking the new layer icon. Click the foreground color and for brightness type in 50%. Fill the empty layer with the foreground color. The reason it's not gray is because the gradient map adjustment layer delineated the 50% gray tone into this specific blue color. Go to Filter and Filter Gallery. Close the Artistic Folder and open the Sketch Folder. Click Halftone Pattern. The pattern type is Line, the contrast is 50, and the size is 1. Open the Channels panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and Channels. Control click or command click the thumbnail of Alpha 1, which makes a selection of it. Open back your Layers panel 
and click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection next to the line pattern. We're ready to add the text. Make the frame layer active. Our text will be placed above it. Open your horizontal type tool and pick Nevis Bold, which is the font I provided the link to. I'll make the size temporarily 225 points, sharp, and center alignment. Click the color box and click the blue background to pick up its color. Click on your document and type out your text. To adjust the space between two characters, click between those characters and press and hold Alt or Option as you press the right or left arrow key on your keyboard. To resize it, click your Move tool and open your Transform tool. Position and resize it over the dark blue panel. Then press Enter or Return. To center it, press Ctrl or Command A to select the canvas and click the Align Horizontal Centers icon. Then deselect it. Lastly, make a composite snapshot of the poster by pressing Ctrl Shift Alt E on Windows or Command Shift Option E on a Mac. Doing this results with a stronger line pattern in the poster. Flattening the layers also creates the same effect. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.